Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on mentors and motivators who are consistently reshaping, redefining, and rediscovering the field of medical health care. I would like to welcome Dr. Terry Hertog, President of the International Hormone Society and world-renowned authority, author, and sought-out lecturer in anti-aging medicine, hormone therapies, and extending lifespan. Dr. Hertog represents the fourth generation of physicians in his family who have worked in this field. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Hertog. Let's go back to the beginning before you were the international expert in hormones that you are today. Think back to a time of your childhood, if you will. And I know that you come from a long legacy of physicians. So think back to the time where the interest was sparked for you and you knew that this was the path or the trajectory that you would take. Well, it's a little different in the sense that I was uh, overwhelmed by this legacy of three physicians before me doing endocrinology, especially thyroid therapy and some other hormone therapies. And uh, it was so, seemed so important, my father only talked about that, that I basically never wanted to be a doctor. And, uh, but when I arrived to the age I had to go to university, uh, I, I didn't see anything else. So I just chose that without conviction. I completed these studies and then I chose psychiatry. Uh, but then in psychiatry, uh, basically, I saw that all these people were hormone deficient. So I thought, something's wrong with the treatment here. They're giving products that aggravate hormone deficiencies that are probably on the basis of their chronic psychological disorder. And so in this way, I said, no, well, I have to choose something more truthful and that helps the patient more. And that would be endocrinology or hormone therapy. And how did the legacy of your father and grandfather pave the way for you to go down this path? Well, they inspired me to go further, that um, to break down prejudice and to uh, find uh, what is the really important, not treating the consequences of a disease like too often is done now, uh, but treating the cause of disease. And that's much more fascinating. The effects are much uh, stronger, and that you can obtain was hormone therapy in many cases. You know, I have to laugh, I'm, I'm reading your CV, and it, it reads like a medical abstract in and of itself. It's, it's goes, it, it is so lengthy and incredible and, and unbelievably impressive. At what point did you decide that you would rather impart your wisdom to other physicians and teach and lecture around the world as opposed to practice? Well, basically, that went very quick. Um, when I started working with my father, um, I saw so many, I would say, um, unbelievable improvement in patients um, that I, I, I said, this is something to share. Uh, when you're having something worthful, I think you want to share. And so basically, uh, it, it all started in the very beginning. I uh, started to do conferences also with my father, then my father passed away and I decided to make a big major conference and it went on for so basically it went quick and um, it came by changing my mind in the sense that my father was a fanatic about thyroid therapy and my great-grandfather was probably uh, one of the biggest ever uh, in the beginning on thyroid therapy and I said maybe what happens with thyroid therapy those let's say uh, very impressive effects that you can have with patients are also um, the case with other hormones. And so I fell on physicians that were as enthusiastic about testosterone and then about female hormones. And so basically, um, I, I think now I'm, I'm working with about 27 different hormone therapies uh, that, that there is um, a sort of synergy between these hormones that is just not one important hormone but many important hormones and by treating all the deficiencies you really arrive to much better results. How often do you see patients in practice? Uh, basically, uh, for the moment, I'm in a sort of sabbatical year, so I have one or two days uh, uh, per week where I see patients personally. Um, I do supervise uh, six physicians, uh, so I look into every, uh, almost every, um, 
of their of the medical records of the patients where I put before they see the patients some advice or I see them after. Um, so basically that helps me also to keep in touch uh, with the patient. I know that people come in from all over the world to try to see you as well. Um, do I understand that your sister is in practice with you? I have a sister in practice. She doesn't work with me. She's been trained by me, and she um, works separately. And I think she somewhere, uh, somewhere on a website was written that she's one of the ten best doctors in the world, following a patient, of course. Oh, wow. <laughs> and um, I don't know if I had that honor, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm very happy um, that, that she gets that sort of uh, quote. Um, um, we work in the same uh, sector, um, but let's say I'm, I'm more the creator, inventor, who works on new uh, things, and then she, she, she follows and has a little bit her own methods. Uh, she's uh, slightly less involved in, in, in the new hormone therapies, uh, but, but then uh, is also curious in other fields, and she's not somebody who uh, gets out of the country as often as I do. Have you had to face any criticism from physicians in the medical community? If I had to face physician uh, criticism, yes, uh, I think very often it's normal. When you're doing cutting-edge medicine, you do face, uh, I would say, quotes or evaluations, appreciations or various uh, opposition. Um, and I personally like that. Um, somebody has even called me the predator uh, because um, when really people go mean and I think I, 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 I stay very uh, courteous, <laughs> but I will correct the situation. So basically I had the chance of never being uh, sanctioned by a medical board, not even having going into for my practice or problems, but it's because also I base everything on the science. And I think uh, science and experience, because we mustn't forget that the experience of physician is as important than scientific studies. Do you get more of an adrenaline rush by working with a patient or by teaching um, or finishing a book? One of the best uh, instructions I ever had in my life was in the very beginning, as my father said, the patient is your master. And that is true. I have learned most of what I've learned with the patient. He comes with problems difficult to solve, but six months later, sometimes we find the therapy or the patient comes with the solution already. So basically, I, I, I love working with patients, and basically, I must admit that if um, this medicine was all over the world, I probably wouldn't be speaking, I wouldn't be writing books, I just would be devoting my time to helping patients. But as it's not the case, um, I have decided I cannot treat all the patients in the world, so my uh, focus is put much on education and if I educate physicians many more patients will be treated than if I just work alone with patients so I have done this this option so as part of a fourth consecutive generation of physicians who works with hormone therapies what would you say is the primary benefit of being well versed and well educated in these dosing protocols and having a working clinical knowledge of hormone deficiencies well um, once you've accumulated a lot of knowledge, even familial knowledge in, in, in a profession like uh, uh, medicine and hormone therapy, there's like a sixth sense coming up. And um, I have had several uh, cases of patients where somewhere I think I didn't have the knowledge and I still found the solution. Um, so this comes with this, let's say, great experience. The more you learn, the more you know that you know little, but the more also you can find solutions to a difficult problem. And I must say that um, I, I like to have very, very difficult cases of patients because that's a new challenge and that uh, helps me always to be in progress because you, with those very difficult cases, you always have to find something new to help them or, or, or they won't be satisfied. Is there a success story that you can share regarding a patient that you helped? Well, uh, success stories, um, there are a lot. Uh, when I, I began, uh, I had a patient who was completely bald-headed, went to many universities to get uh, his hair back, and within two or four months, he got all his hair back uh, with a treatment like ACTHN, which is not uh, a, lot, a lot used in thyroid therapy. And then after, there was still some hair missing, uh, male hormones brought the hair back. Um, there are many uh, stories. There are people that, for example, were uh, exhausted, collapsed situation, 
very mentally fragile and emotionally, and then they were put on a treatment. Uh, many treatments didn't work, and then suddenly I added Grotamont, for example, and then uh, something fantastic began. Uh, uh, those persons uh, could even um, go through enormous stress that even a normal person cannot cope with. And with a lot of inner peace and acceptance, but also finding solutions. Um, I, I think there are, there are so many um, uh, cases. Um, and sometimes I would like to write a book just on these cases because uh, they will give hope to people who have problems and, and don't find solutions because they are, there are many solutions that are just not known enough by the physician. Now to some more personal questions, if we can. Um, when you got out of medical school and you started your practice, how did you initially implement all of these things that you were discovering and researching, and how did you initially begin? Well, I initially began as an assistant in psychiatry, and I was just amazed by, let's say, um, I would say the, the not sufficient, well, uh, the good diagnosis. The, the, the patients were suffering from hormone deficiencies and they got psychotropes that further aggravated their hormone deficiencies in many cases. So basically I, I started with a conflict situation. Uh, something's wrong here and uh, somebody said you, with your um, approach, you're going to be professor in university, you're going to be a, maybe an international star, and basically I never became a professor uh, because uh, you stay in a system where too many people control you and you don't have the possibility of making major progress. So I'm very happy of not being in institutions, although I get sometimes titles here and there in some countries. Um, it, it's not that is important. What's important is making the world better, and uh, that is uh, possible uh, by uh, helping people without searching for a title. So that ha basically has been influenced me very much in the beginning. And I implemented all the information I got basically because I worked as an assistant with my father who was uh, a great master in medicine. He could teach, uh, well, some people can teach in two hours what you need 20 years to acquire as an experience. He was one of those. So I was very fortunate to work with him uh, in the beginning. And, uh, and then he passed away uh, when he was under uh, severe stress. So basically I had to get the legacy of the family on my own shoulders and I, 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 my idea was then I'll spread the knowledge. I'll get a lot of uh, people knowing this, a lot of doctors, so I'm not alone. And I think this has happened. Uh, I've been one of the contributors to enlarge the movement. When were you made president of that? Well, basically I created the International Monster Society with a physician um, many years ago because there was um, nothing in this field. There was uh, this endocrine society, but there were those are made of very conventional um, uh, physicians who don't seem to get uh, enough innovative therapy or then it's with a new molecule that doesn't belong to the body. So I, I, I thought it's absolutely needed and what we did with International Money was I think something really um, fantastic is that we made physicians from all over the world to sign consensus on hormone therapy. And many of those hormone therapy are forefront hormone therapies like Grotamon or melatonin that time, DHEA, and that has helped a lot of physicians getting out of the medical board when, when you can uh, present to a medical board who uh, is not, doesn't agree with the treatment. And you see, yeah, look, there are 2,000 people, 2,000 physicians from all the world signing this. It, it really helps to get them out of the, uh, the, the problems. It has helped many, many physicians like this. And how did you come to learn of A4M initially? Well, A4M, um, I uh, basically learned from my father. He went to the third conference of the A4M, and he was so amazed because there was this doctor of whom I've become a very good friend. He's a very good friend of mine, Walter Pierpaul, who talked about the amazing effects of melatonin for longevity uh, and for a lot of other causes. And he, he found it so enlightening. There was so much passion in this conference. I think there were 500 or 800 uh, physicians that I decided that's interesting, I'll go there. And then I just proposed 
to talk, and I started at that moment as one of the first in the world to give regularly Grotemont treatment to patients. So I talked uh, about Grotemont in a, a conference in Las Vegas. It was the biggest publicist I ever had, where 800 physicians in the room. For me, it was a lot at that time. And um, I had five professors talking also on, on Grotemont therapy on sessions, but what they said was it's too soon to treat with Grotemont. And I didn't agree. It's already too, almost too late. We should be treating since very long with Grotemont treatment. Most of people who age, uh, and, and, uh, because it has such reversing, I showed with my slides what the efficacy was and things like that. And we had a debate. I was fortunate to be the last to talk because we had all those, uh, let's say, strict professors who had their opinion of uh, it's too early to treat, and I said uh, we we have to treat. And basically, I talked so well at that conference that after I had uh, during four hours outdoors, um, uh, doctor physicians talking with me, giving their impressions uh, or their questions. It was something for me quite um, surprising, and I was very happy of what happened. <laughs> so. Have you had any regrets along the way in your journey? If I had any regrets, basically I've been um, spending a lot of time uh, answering controversies. Uh, so that has permitted to get no more knowledge and things like that. Um, but I would like so much having treated patients more or having uh, the movement to grow quicker uh, in its importance. Um, but it's not really a regret because um, if, if I have knowledge, it's thanks to all those oppositions that have um, uh, shaken me and, and, and give me the fear to, and to search more information. So basically, uh, um, I, I think I have probably one of the most, if not the most, uh, the greatest um, uh, data bank on scientific studies on what we're doing, and, and that's thanks to the opposition. So you are viewed as a mentor to many. Since the death of your father, do you have a mentor now? I have many mentors. Um, uh, among the, the greatest doctors uh, that have really um, opened my eyes are Dr. Jonathan Wright, for example. Uh, he, he, he was uh, giving seminars on, on nutritional therapies with a lot of scientific studies. So I have actually copied or been inspired by what he did. Um, I, I had um, a doctor who uh, was talking about testosterone deficiency, Andropos, he called it, a, a Belgian doctor who Im immigrated to France and then to Spain, uh, Dr. George de Blet, who uh, I, I talked two hours with him. Uh, he opened my field, showed me that testosterone was as important as thyroid therapy to people um, and to men in, 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 in his case. And he himself had the same impression. He said, I never um, uh, have assistants uh, who work with me. I never talk to a person like you. So we really went on a, a very good level. Um, I would talk also Dr. Walter Pepperoli or Professor Walter Pepperoli, who has, was the first to write a book that was a bestseller on hormone therapy, The Melatonin Miracle. And, and, and he's been uh, inspiring. He said, when he wrote that book, I said, now I can begin talking uh, to public. I can begin talking conference about what we're doing. Because we kept it a little bit secret uh, in order not to raise too much uh, critics or positions so we could go doing our work. But he uh, gave me the final push to say, now I won't be stopping talking about what the importance of all these therapies. What do you think your father and your grandfather and great-grandfather would say about the work you're doing today? About the work I would be doing, uh, what my great-grandfather or my grandfather, my father would say, um, I, I think they would appreciate it. Um, I'm very unconventional in my dressing, in my things. So I'm, um, um, even my family has sometimes problems if I have a car, it has to be in bright yellow and things like that. I don't think that's the part they would like of me, although they would accept it, I, I personally think. But I need it. Uh, I, every, um, I, I think uh, I'm here on earth, like many people, to make other people brilliant. And, and, and I see everything um, become brilliant. So I, 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 I wouldn't have done the good work I've done if I couldn't have this faculty also in, 
in, in my color choices or my dress choices and things like that. So I, I, I think they would be happy. My father was always worried this knowledge is going to disappear. And he said that uh, other doctors will never accept it. Uh, basically, I think now many doctors accept it. Uh, so so I, I, I think he, he's happy somewhere of, um, of, of, of the success. Uh, he, he is, in certain sense, uh, um, I think um, if there's an existence beyond it, he um, might uh, be scared of uh, all the risk I take of talking about, let's say, what is truth or what is the cause and things like that, because he was a more humble doctor who, um, who, 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 who spoke out but didn't um, um, confront with major stresses. I've, I've um, made the medical, National Medical Board in Belgium condemned. I have uh, canceled two laws, and I'm going to cancel the third law that prohibited our medicine or, or part of it. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very um, positively aggressive to defend this. I, you know, I would defend almost any doctor in this sector that does good work uh, fiercely because I think it's worth for it. So would you say that you're not perpetuating your father and grandfather and great grandfather's legacies. You're creating your own legacy. I think I'm I'm creating a legacy for uh, uh, whole humanity, and and I'm inspiring myself not only by the doctors of my family, um, but also by other doctors uh, that are, are great masters in medicine. Um, uh, and, and so basically, I, I think uh, I, I'm doing what I have to do. I don't know why. I have a, a, a feeling in me that is um, extremely strong. I, I often they said, please don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You're going to get yourself in trouble. I still did it, uh, and I didn't get so many troubles. I probably got, but I had the power to overcome. So, so basically, um, I think I'm doing what every human being in this world uh, tries to do, trying to make the world better. Uh, by um, the possibilities I have. What legacy do you hope to leave? The legacy I hope to leave um, is extremely ambitious uh, are two. First, that this type of medicine is all over the world accessible to any person who wants to get access to. Also financially, that it's not too expensive, that everybody can enjoy a better health and a better physical appearance thanks to this therapy and maybe a longer longevity. My second goal is extremely ambitious and is a target, so I cannot say I have this already, is I would like to help uh, humanity, uh, people that will live, um, become 130 to 150 years old with an aspect of a middle age and a health of a middle-aged person, so that we would extend the number of uh, uh, years of quality of life in life, and also extend the number of years, and that people would die then uh, maybe around between 140 and 160 or 170. Uh, so I, and I think this is really going to be possible. Maybe I won't benefit myself from this, but I hope to make a contribution in this sense. So what have you implemented into your own life? Well, I take myself about 15 hormone therapies. Um, I have the first two hours of the day are only for me before I only worked for others and for my work, but now I, I take good care of myself in the morning. I go swimming, we have a long swimming pool. I go running and I eat uh, healthy foods um, in, in, in the morning. So um, I implement this medicine also to me, and, and I think that is what every physician should do. He should be an example and benefit also of what he's doing. So basically, and this is what I am implementing. So you have authored a number of books, and you just finished what um, I think you've described as your legacy. Yeah. Would you um, care to discuss this? Yes. <laughs> so um, I've written several books, and, and one of those books is the Hormone Handbook, which has a, a great, great success uh, because it really helps physicians. Uh, but this is maybe a step further, is um, a textbook on reversing physical aging. 
Uh, when you reverse physical aging uh, by insight, you also improve health. And basically what this book teaches is if we want to improve health as physicians, we need to reverse the aging of the patient. The patient should at each consultation look better and better and feel better because his health is uh, better inside. So this helped, and this is a very, uh, this is the volume one, where it teaches about what to do when there's hair loss, bad quality of hair, um, what to do uh, f to reverse the aging of the face, all the different wrinkles, because there are different therapies following the aging sign you have. And, but, but basically by doing that, you're also improving the whole health of the person. And also, this is also, I think, unique uh, for a book in this sense, is that it also talks about how to reverse the aging of the senses. Hearing loss, our tinnitus, reversing um, the uh, eye vision, uh, so even uh, cataract is more difficult, although it's well discussed here, but glaucoma and, and even myopia and presbyopia and things like that. It also teaches smell loss, taste loss, uh, what to do in or taste distortion, and even the touch, because we, the touch ages um, and we can reverse it. So it gives you, I think, the best nutritional and hormone therapies. Not only about hormone therapies, I try to be as accurate as possible uh, and how to treat disease or disorders with uh, the body's own molecules. And I think here you find fascinating information. I myself put it next to my bed to read things to be sure that I'm going to implement even better things on myself. So it could be called the hormonal Bible or something to that effect. I don't think it's a hormone <laughs> Bible because it's also a nutritional okay. Bible. So, so, but, but, but I would say it's, it's the first step to real health. It's reversing physical aging. This so is what advice would you give to a physician who is considering transitioning from a traditional practice to an integrative or functional medical practice? Well, first to keep his mind open. The physician wants to go, keep his mind open because there are many therapies, but then what is extremely important is to understand what has priority because you could give a lot of different supplements and not give the best supplements. This book, for example, shows you in order of priority what works best for this and this uh, reversal of aging sign. Um, so try to, hormone therapies are probably the, our uh, biggest um, tool to reverse physical aging, but it doesn't work if the diet is not good. So you just, to, the physician should become knowledgeable about how to improve the diet, which is basically a sort of paleolithic type diet, the diet of made of fruits, uh, vegetables, and, and meat and fish, but not, not of grains and, and not of sugars and sweets. And or milk products, and uh, then um, he should be able also give some nutritional therapies because you can see on the skin, on the hair, you can recognize what's missing on the nails and things like that, and, and it has an impact. So even also on longevity, to live longer, vitamins or are, are trace elements seem to have as strong an impact as hormones. And then, of course, the hormone therapies, and now what we call also the peptide therapies, which are amazing um, molecules, they are much cheaper than hormones often, and they have a efficacy to reverse aging almost as strongly as, as a hormone, if not more in some cases, like folistatin. So when you're not busy writing a thousand page book and thinking about leaving your legacy, what do you do in your spare time besides swim? In, in spare shop? time, I, I, I do sports. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm more like a triathlon athlete, uh, and uh, I'm going to run a marathon in, in uh, a few weeks' times. Um, um, I, I love going in, in great landscapes, and um, by running I go quicker in different types of landscapes, while if I was walking I stay in the same landscape for a longer time. And so I, I like enormous, I do also some bicycling, but my preferred sports is, is jogging. I also read a lot. Um, if I have time, so um, um, I, I like to learn all the time. So, so basically, and, and it's true that I'm um, what you can call a, a very active, if not hyperkinetic person, so I cannot stay on a chair a very long time. <laughs> so if you weren't a physician, what do you think you would be doing? If I weren't a physician, I would be an artist, and I would be um, 
I like doing sculpture or painting. Do you do that as a hobby? And no, no, <laughs> I have sacrificed. I have started and I have to make a choice. And basically in medicine, I'm being an artist. I'm, I'm writing books in a completely different manner. Uh, that almost nobody writes, um, um, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's like art anyway. And I would also like to have been a writer, and I, basically I'm a writer now with my book. So, so basically I have incorporated in different way um, my main goals in, in life as a professional. So what has been your most rewarding part of your journey as both a physician or in your life, personally, professionally? however you wish to respond and take that? It's a more difficult question because um, it needs a certain understanding. Um, uh, when my father died, s some very strange things happened, actually. Um, and um, it's like um, a, a consciousness in the whole family and many friends that something bizarre was happening. They had sort of spiritual contact. And uh, I was always um, very, uh, what we call in French, Cartesian, Cart uh, Descartes uh, said, uh, what you see exists, what you don't see doesn't exist. And so basically I was very rigorous. Very much a scientist. And, uh, very scientific, and I thought, now it, it's a sort of whole spiritual world that, that opened for me. And um, uh, during many years, I couldn't talk about it uh, because there was no openness for it. Now there's much more openness. Something is changing spiritually in the world. And um, so um, um, that was my, my greatest experience uh, that is uh, now. Uh, Can you share? At least second. Well, um, it, it, it's. Um, um, uh, I'm much more than just a believer in a religion. Um, I, I believe that um, we live in different times, uh, that this moment, if you find a sensation, you already have a part of the past is there, part of the future is there. I, I believe that time doesn't really exist. Uh, I believe that, um, for example, the goals I have that are maybe a big already are um, accomplished somewhere in another dimension, another world. And um, I, I, I don't think that people who are dead are really dead. I believe that they are, um, uh, that you can feel them, that you can contact them and things like that. Uh, so, so life is much more than just what we see. And, but I experience this in my heart and in my soul, I would say. And, and this is what uh, probably motivates me the most. And, and it's always the discovery of new things and new things. That's, uh, so that's what is really the change. So I have to ask you then, if you think that your, when I asked you regarding your, what your father or grandfather or great-grandfather would say about you, and you said, oh, they, you know, they, they might <laughs> s you know, snarkle about at my dress or, or yellow car or what have yeah. you. To me, it seems like you already know that they're there guiding you and directing you, or at least alongside of you within this journey throughout yes. this universe, wherever yes. they may, you may not be able to see them, or you know, but you know that they're there. Yes. So you know, to me, you're they're along for this long uh, for the ride with you. And is that correct? Is, is my yes, I, I, I believe they're not dead. I believe that uh, somewhere they contact me. Um, I, I, I believe they inspire me uh, all the time. And that there's also an interaction that maybe what I'm doing inspires them too in, in whatever dimension they are now. Uh, so um, my, my wife at certain moments said to me, um, what a pity this physician died and we didn't know he was going to die. He had cancer. And, and uh, we didn't have the contact, but at that moment I was uh, smiling and I said, but, 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 but he's there. <laughs> and, and it's something I feel more than I, I, I can prove. Maybe in your next book you'll be able to prove it. <laughs> 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 and write another, uh, how many pages is that book? I don't know, but it's uh, the That's heaviest book I've ever carried other than uh, 86 Ulysses, pages. Think, so. Amazing. And, uh, it's just volume one, 
we, it's only about the head. We also need the rest of the body. Well, uh, even books like that are made by inspiration, and maybe something of that inspiration comes from the Your other world. Your collaborators, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> I, I never had in all my whole career the impression I was doing anything. It's like uh, I'm just uh, an intermediary between, let's say, a, a force of, of good or a force of, of science or a force of nature and, and what has to be given to the patient. Well, thank you so much for your time and your wisdom, and, and you, you're absolutely inspiring and incredibly humble. You're, you're, thank you. It's true. You're uh, very intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And we'll end it on that note. <laughs>